and good afternoon from a very sunny bath. So we are here at a press launch of Mary Shelley's House of Frankenstein uh, here in Bath. It opens on Monday, uh, but we are here for an exclusive preview of the experience. So we don't know what to expect. So we're going to go inside in a little while and uh, we will see what's going on. That said, I've never been called a journalist. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is, journalists came in this morning, three of them came out. So... Do they have all their body parts on them? I think one of them was missing an arm. Perfectly <laughs> armless if you ask me. But... It is totally armless. Indeed. So, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Sir. Very good luck. How many of us are there going in? I believe there's five or six of you. But again, make sure you don't get lost. It's very easy to get lost in there. Familiar face here. A, um, one of the world's first feminists uh, sadly died um, in, in childbirth with Mary. Wow. Her father, William Godwit, who was a, a political theorist and philosopher of his day. So Mary was subject in her early life to being surrounded by fascinating people and, and, and figures, such so that she was inspired to, um, to, to write her first work, the published work, at the age of 10. Um, which is here, and then developed a fascination with electricity and galvanism, which was the new thing in those days. And the other thing which she was particularly fascinated with was phantasmagoria paintings, as uh, well the paintings, took 3D uh, images of that, sent it to a CNC photographer, added a fly, <laughs> and um, we have yeah, we 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 a uh, um, um, representation as close as we can possibly get to it. And in Mary's day, they were interested, they were fascinated by fantastic anything, really. Mary Shelley, for five days, struggled and then came up with the idea of fantasy. So it was conceived in Geneva. And John, interestingly, John Polidori came up with the animal. His story was the concept of the vampire which later, was to, well, 70 years later, was turned into Dracula by Bram Stoker. But isn't it amazing that that single week of misery caused by that volcano in 1815 created the two most iconic horror characters of all time, in the same time. It still exists, and there are two rooms here, five Abbey Church churchyard, and it was here through the winter of 1816-1817 that she wrote uh, Frankenstein. Shelley Percy Shelley was mostly away, trying to raise money from his family in London. Uh, so she was left alone here. She went to exhibitions of galvanism uh, in the town, where they tried to reanimate the dead using electricity. Um, and now all inspired by um, the, the, the fact that so much of her life was shrouded in death. Um, like I mentioned earlier, her mother died in um, childbirth. It wasn't actually childbirth. Um, the, the, the surgeon who was doing an autopsy next door was then called to help with the birth of Mary. And in those days, they didn't watch that happens between uh, Mary's mother and uh, what she uh, described as being the creature. Do you ever mention Frankenstein as a monster? He was always the creature. Of course, his uncle Frankenstein, was, uh, Victor Frankenstein, is the, uh, the, the doctor who made him. Uh, he never had a name. Uh, in the book, he's mentioned as perhaps being called Adam, but he was always the creature. But Sorry, that's right. And wow. here he is. So we commissioned a, an animatronic company called Millennium FX, the Blackford Award winning studio, to create and, and brief them and rebrief, worked out, and this is how Mary described the creature. He had yellow skin, he had tall skin, you can see the muscles underneath. He had, he had pearly white teeth, he had black lips, and he was eight feet tall, which is the, the size of our creature here. He took 12 weeks to build, uh, and you can see he's animated, his eyes move, the muscles around his eyes uh, are animated, he operates on a one minute uh, sequence, and his chest breathes. And our tablet, the 1931 Universal Pictures movie, there was another movie, uh, the original movie was 1910, it was just 16 minutes long, 
uh, and it had um, sta standard Ogle playing Victor Frankenstein in this character here. And we got a representation of that in the screen room upstairs. But of course, the one we all remember is um, Boris Karloff, the 1931 Universal Pictures movie. But the iconic figure, and Boris Karloff was an amazing character, um, a wonderful actor, uh, worked all the way through, all his life, all the way through to the 1960s. And in his great uh, we'll see if here. <laughs> oh, if anybody wants to, if you it up, the Holy Hand will here, it will give you an electric shock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not going to display it for you. <laughs> I would like to demonstrate <laughs> Shall I? Shall I be the second? <laughs> Shall I have the <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely is great. It's worse than you think it's going to be. <laughs> I thought like a mild tickle. So, um, what we'll be doing is having evening events as well. So, I mean, of course, Bath is hen party central. So, we're going to have uh, Brides of Frankenstein uh, evenings. Um, and of course, people can come in here, they can sit and popcorn, and they can watch whatever. And the thing will be goulash, it'll be <laughs> finger sandwiches, it'll be Bloody Marys, it'll be Frankenfurters, themed food. There, there isn't a themed restaurant in Bath, so I think that could do, do quite well. Um, another asset, we want to have accommodation. So there's a building at the back here, and, a, uh, and uh, the basement of the next block, owned by the same landlord, and she's going to rent it to us. And we're going to do scary accommodation. So this will be scare B and B. Um, and uh, it'll be goffed out, uh, and you can choose mild, medium, or hot, uh, <laughs> depending on to your tastes. There'll be a lot of monitoring going on, things moving, and you know, throughout the night. Uh, and, and, and other assets, and we're going to take all those eight assets associated with the building and the attraction, and then replicate that elsewhere. So that would be perhaps Las Vegas, Amsterdam. One of the traditional Georgia townhouses of Bath converted into this. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm sure the traditions when our landlady came back to the This is not your normal lake up to the edge.
And good afternoon, and we are finally face to face with the monster, the Frankenstein's monster. Remember, he is not called Frankenstein, he is just the monster. This animatronic is absolutely incredible. It's about eight foot tall. Um, it's realistic, its eyes move, its mouth moves, its chest moves. Um, yeah, that was a sudden lunge at me. I would probably take a run for it. But um, yeah, really impressed with House of Frankenstein. It's not a scare attraction, uh, it is a story of the history of Frankenstein and Mary Shelley about how she came to Bath, how she wrote the novel, but the atmosphere in here is incredible. Um, downstairs you'll have seen some footage of the basement. The basement is like a little mini scare attraction. Um, no live actors or anything in there, but a few jump scares. Um, I jumped a bit on one of the effects. Um, really great, you know, they, they recommend it's only suitable for children of a certain age. But the atmosphere throughout, the sets and the detail, all of these are, have been specifically made for the attraction. And it's just amazing. And the smells as well. So this is a very chemical, laboratory type smell. Um, yeah, it's quite hard to describe it. It's, it really is quite nasty. But all of the different rooms, the cinema room has like a popcorn smell. Uh, and there's smells of uh, different things relating to it. So. Yeah, very, very impressive. So House of Frankenstein opens in Bath on Monday, July the 19th. Uh, and if you're down in this area, definitely give it, give it a try. Come and get, give it a look out. Um, they've got massive plans for what they want to do in the future. You might have heard they were talking about they want to do a cafe called Scary Mary's. They've got the escape room, which isn't open yet, uh, which has been created by the, the team from Unlocked Vision. Um, but they want to do Frankenstein's balls at Halloween. They've got they've got a um, room nearby that they actually want to rent out for Scare B and B. Um, and we were saying like, what are you going to do over Halloween? Are you going to put some live actors in? And they said yes. As we as we go forward, there's a very good chance we put some live actors down in the basement. Each of these rooms will have a host guiding you around, explaining what's going on. But there is so much to see and do. Like every room has got. Uh, it's like a proper museum with real, real descriptive um, posts. Ignore the meat curtains as we come through. Uh, each room has got, you know, different thing about the history of the, the story, the novel, the original plays. Uh, like I didn't know that the original Frankenstein first production of it was a musical, which is crazy. Uh, you, you know, for such a classic horror story that the first production was a musical. But yeah, the whole thing is effectively free flow. You just move around, go to whatever attraction you want to go to next. Um, you can see you go up to the popular culture room where we were earlier, and there's a lot here. So we are going to sign off for the House of Frankenstein Bath. We're going to thank them for inviting us down. Uh, and we say, yeah, if you're in the area, definitely come and check it out and go down into the basement if you dare. So with that, we're going to sign out and we'll see you soon.